Up deep left, uh, Brendan Bulek, Buckeyes <coughs> on Sports Illustrated. Hey, Coach, thanks for spending some time with us. Um, I want to ask you maybe less personnel and more just your perspective on some of the goal line stuff this past weekend. It felt like it was maybe more challenging than it had often been this year when you were in goal-to-go situations. When you look back at the tape, what was particularly challenging? Well, I think it's like anything else. You know, when you bring a bunch of bodies in, heavy bodies, they bring a bunch of guys, and you basically have 22 people within the hashes. So there's not a lot of space. Um, you know, we don't really run the quarter. We have not run the quarterback a lot in that situation, so you're going to always be outnumbered. But and, and give them credit too. You know, I mean, they, they've they've got good players over there too, and and made some plays. But in the end, you know, in the end, we were able to to still punch things in, and offensive line was able to move people still and, and get the ball in. Sure, you asked a lot of questions about Mayan and Trey, so I'll ask you about uh, about Mitch. About Mayan and Trey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mitch had some fun with us last week uh, yeah. in talking about am I a tight end, am I a fullback? Um, how much have you enjoyed working with Mitch in that spot? Yeah, so you know, Mitch when he first came here, he 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 was a running back when he first came. You know, coming out of high school and and. Um, I ran for a bunch of yards down this high school down in Tennessee area. So, you know, he has that he has some of that background in him. And so it's been good. Now do we spend a lot of time? I don't. I don't spend a lot of time with him. I mean he comes down a little bit, you know, um every day just to do a couple little things, ball ball um you know, some ball exchange stuff with the quarterbacks and the running backs, but but I won't spend an exuberant amount of time with him as well. But but yeah, it's, it's good for him and it's good for our football team. It gives us another dimension, it gives us another playmaker that can do some things for our offense. So so it's been really good. Uh, front row left, Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports. Hi, Tony. Um, obviously, Mayan has developed well as a back. Have you even seen him develop as a young man? The reason I ask is I remember talking to him when he was a freshman. He'd barely say two words to us. <laughs> now he's he's very engaged and, you know, just seems to be a lot more confident as a young yeah, man. Yeah, I, I think he's becoming more confident in his own skin, and, and um, but definitely seen him mature as a young man, as you would expect, especially in this program. Um, but he's been through a lot. You know, that guy's had a lot of personal challenges in his life, and and um, he's been through so much. Um, I'm extremely, extremely proud of the young man that he's become. He's a guy that this entire program leans on and, and loves him. Um, he's got this engaging personality that, that when you first meet him, because when I first, I gotta be honest, when I first met him in recruiting, I was like, who's, what the hell is this? You know, this guy doesn't, this guy doesn't talk, you know, but, um, but as you get to know him, he's got the, the, the kindest, biggest heart. Um, he cares about his teammates. He's a team guy, a consummate team team guy. Um, he's fun. He's engaging. He brings so much value into the running back room just with his attitude, infectious attitude, and and uh, he brings that to me every day. So so aside from playing ball, he brings a lot of value to me personally. One more quick one for me. Um, how's a guy like T.C. Caffey fall through the, cra the cracks? I know he had one FBS offer, Army. I'm sure you're thrilled that he did, yeah. getting him as a walk-on. He had one of the best careers in Ohio high school football. And he yeah, I, I can't answer. I, I, I can't answer that. You know, you'd have to ask all those other schools that missed. But, um, but no, we were fortunate to get him. And, you know, I haven't really actively, me personally, haven't gone out and actively recruited a walk-on like I did a scholarship player and, and, you know, probably that's my own fault, but um, I did with him and his family and, um, you know, because I told him back in the, back way back when, if there's some things that come, come on the rise for you and your family that you think are in their best interest with scholarships, by all means, I understand, take it. But if not, and this is something you'd want to entertain, here's what we have for you. And, um, and that's what they wanted to do. He's a Buckeye and grew up in this great state and wanted to be a part of this program. And we are thrilled to death to have him because he's, he's going to be a good player. Thank you. Uh, third row left, Dan Hope, Levin Warriors. Tony, yes, sir. you guys signed Mayan in 2020. There were a lot of questions about running back recruiting at that time. There's that guy couldn't recruit. <laughs> that oh, I know. <laughs> does, does that make it more satisfying to see what he's doing now? Well, it's not about you know trying to satisfy any of you guys or anybody else. I, I, doesn't mean the hell. Just go home. I'm never. No one's ever satisfied at my house. So, but um, but no. In all reality, we just want to get players that can help our football team and help our program and help us win. Um, and so that's that's what we came. We got to mine and 
And a lot of people, you know, to your point, a lot of people would have said, well, he's not that highly recruited, but we saw some things in him, obviously. And, and just some, sh some sheer and raw toughness, um, just the way he plays the game. And he's an Ohio kid, you know, and if we can recruit Ohio players, that's what we're going to do. And um, so it's been great. And he's, like I said, he brings so much value to this football program, and, and he's a damn good football player. Did you always think Mayan could get to this level, or has he even exceeded your expectations? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't. I try not to put expectations on our players, on our kids. I don't try to try to not to put a ceiling on them and just, just coach them to be the best that they can be. And as, as we continue to grow and climb, you know, we'll go where we can go. But I, I try not to, to say, well, I expect this, and all of a sudden, if he can exceed it, I'm not going to put that ceiling on him. And, and I don't think that's right to do to any player, for that matter. But, um, but here's what it is. He's tough. I mean, he, he is rugged, and he's a violent, violent player. And we saw that in high school. We saw that as true freshman year. And it's just continuing to be the guy we think he could be. Uh, uh, <coughs> left, Tony Gerbin, Buckeye Hall. Tony, what's it like for an assistant coach when you're recruiting and you really, really like a player, but there's no room for him? It's tough. You know, it's hard. And... You know, but that's part of being part of a program like this. You start recruiting guys. And, and I think the hardest part about recruiting is you, you build these impeccable relationships with kids and families. Um, sometimes you get them, right? And there's sometimes it's eventually you got to turn and walk away from them. And where you had a scholarship as you're going and then all of a sudden you don't. And so that's hard. And, and it's hard to look young people in the face and say, you know, I know, I know you may want to be here, but we just don't have room. Um, but that's part of that's the business side of it. And, and at the end of the day, I'm a firm believer, too, at the end of the day, if you build those relationships the right way, um, kids and coaches are all diligent about the work that we do, that everybody eventually fits where they're supposed to fit. Was Mayan in danger of being one of those guys that you wanted but didn't end up a Buckeye? My, Mayan. Well, he was a guy, again, it, we were on some guys that, some other guys. Now, he was always right there, and we were always talking to him. And um, but at the end of the day, you know, we didn't know where it was going, and, and and it kind of fell back, fell back into his lap a little bit. And then he had some decision to make. If you remember, he was committed to Iowa State, um, and he could probably tell you more about it. But I mean, I, I quite frankly, I think he was pretty pissed at me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, no, I he was pissed at me, but. Um, you know, and I've told the story before that, that, you know, long story short is first impressions do go a long way, but they also can be wrong sometimes, too. And like I said, he didn't talk much. He kind of sat there and didn't say much. He wouldn't he wasn't very responsive to things that I was trying to say to him or do with him as far as calls and text messages and driving an hour and a half up here. And so I was kind of like, well, maybe he doesn't want to be recruited by us. But it really came down to I think he might have felt that I had slighted him a little bit. Um, and then as I got to know him, I did. I went down to him, and at the time was his head coach, Coach Parker. And I remember sitting him down in the weight room. We're sitting there, and I, and I did. I, I said, I'm gonna, I have to apologize to you. Whether you come to Ohio State or not, I have to clear my, my chest here. Um, I have to apologize to you because I had the wrong impression of you, and I was wrong. And, and I think that... Um, I think I, I hope to think that was probably a big moment in our relationship that, hey, I, I was wrong. And as I've got to know him more, I, I, I saw, no, this, this kid's got something about him. And he may not talk a lot on the onset, but he's listening and hearing everything. Um, and he's about as respectful as a young man as you could get. Has he apologized to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, and there's no need to. He would never have to. He didn't do anything wrong, you know. And um, But he's a highly competitive kid. He really is, and, and I think the one thing that he brings in the room, that really our whole room is that way, is they, they champion each other's efforts, and there's, there's, there's zero selfishness in that room. Um, and for me to walk into a room like that, that's, it's, it's an absolute joy to be a part of. Second row left, Steve Hellwagen, 24-7 Sports. Hey, Coach, um, I know you can't go into the nature of Travion's injury, but uh, can you recount, I guess, what exactly transpired, how that all kind of went sideways. Yeah, it, it, it was, dude, that's something that he and our medical staff that came in and, you know, obviously we want um, 
also want all our players to be healthy and be ready to play. But at the end of the day, we're going to defer to our medical staff. And um, when they came in and said, hey, here's what we feel is going on with him in, in conversation with Trey, and here's what we feel is best. And within seconds, we moved on yeah. and then made the adjustments necessary. I know availability is an important part of this whole thing. You've got to be on the field to play. Does what Mayan showed you in that game lead you guys to, as a staff, to maybe reconsider the roles of those two guys if Travion is completely healthy? And I, I'm not even into this whole starting thing or whatever, but just number of carries, the roles for these guys. No, I, I mean, I look at it as we have two starters. I have the whole time. Um, I, I not look at it as a well, you know, this guy's got to be, he gets so many more carries or this, I, I, I just have some function that way. Um, we have two guys that are capable of being starters here. We have two guys that are capable of playing championship level football, we believe. Um, and we're going to use them accordingly and how we need to use them to help win games. And, um, you know, I get asked the question during training camp every year, well, do you want to do things by committee or does it have to be some a, a, a bell cow, as people put it? And I say the same thing every year. I don't care. Well, I want to win games. We're here to win games. We're not here to stack up stats. If stats come with it, then fantastic. But we're here to win games, and how, however we have to do that, that's how we do it. Second row middle, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Uh, a non-mind question, but where did the, from what you were watching in preseason camp, where did things change for Dallin Hayden? Was it something that as soon as he got here, you saw maybe more than you were expecting, or did uh, did, did something kind of start flashing? Well, I think this reps, you know. Um, you know, during training camp when Evan went down, that afforded that afforded down to get more reps. And with more reps, you get seen more and, and have opportunities to flash, if you will, and, and to make plays. So I think that the rep count up for him and it helped him, obviously, because now he's, he's getting to play and getting some experiences that maybe he might not have otherwise as many. And so that, um, um, I, won't, I won't say it's a benefit, but, but that afforded him more opportunities. And that's kind of where it started to show up. Right next door, Doug Lamarise, Cleveland.com. Tony, the awesome. offensive uh, meetings that you guys have when you're sitting down in the middle of the week and getting ready to make the game plan for Saturday, can you just tell us kind of what it's like in that room and, and as an, an assistant coach, what's the balance of, hey, I want to get my ideas in there, but also, you know, the meeting can't be 10 hours long and you're doing yeah, structure. Yeah, you know, we have, a, we, we have a structure of offense that we – that we run and um, myself, Coach Day, Coach Hinton, um, Coach Fry, we kind of do the, go off and we'll start doing the run game. Um, we're, you know, we kind of sit down and say, okay, here are the things, uh, these certain formations that we like and um, based on the defense that they present, um, and then we'll come back, we, you know, we, we leave and we come back as a full staff and kind of just talk, all, put it all together. and. Um, you know, then we kind of interject, well, here's the pass game and here's the play action passes that go along with things. And so we just kind of piece it all together. And, um, yeah, and, but again, everyone has a say. Everyone has an, uh, has an opportunity to express things that they think would do to enhance. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just kind of like being in a family, right? At the end of the day, when we walk out the door, we're going to all be on the same page. We can't do everything. Um, people can't get upset and, and, and if their idea isn't used. That's okay, um, and, we, and we do what's best, to, what's best to put our players in the best position to be successful based on what they can do that works in the confines of our offense. I don't know if that answers your question. What's Ryan like running the game? He's the best. I mean, and I'm not saying, I mean, you say, well, you better say that, right? <laughs> no, no, actually, the guy is amazing, um, and I've told him this before. I, I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And I've worked for numerous head coaches, obviously, in different stops and different schools. And, you know, I've been fortunate. I've never had a bad job. And But I do believe that, that Ryan Day is one of the all-time top guys I've ever, ever worked, been had the pleasure to work for and with. And, you know, and I say with because um, he does not make you feel like you work for him. You work with him. Um, just the, the man that he is, the... The, he, he makes everyone feel valued and, and, um, and heard. Um, so that empowers you to do your job. And it, it empowers you to do your job and to have ownership in what you do because he allows that. And not only is it allowed, he promotes that. Um, 
But he does the same thing with our players, and and so I am I'm, I am um, I am indebted to, to be able to work with a guy like that. Right in front of him, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Tony, could you kind of give your assessment of how Traviano has played this year? He's done okay. He's done some good things. So I think, um, you know, I think some people might be remiss because he hasn't had some of the big runs that 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 he had had earlier last year. But but he's still doing some good things, and. Um, you know, there's a room for improvement, sir. Yeah, there's, there's room for improvement in everybody's game. But uh, but he has not played poorly whatsoever. Um, I, I, I think he might be a little frustrated because there haven't been the, the long, dynamic 50, 60, 70 yard runs, but, but those will come. You know, those will come. What do you want to see him improve? I just think, you know, just um, some, of the, some of the vision things, and I think attacking you know, second, third level defenders and, and kind of making some guys miss in the back end of the defense. So, but a lot of that's on me, you know, that I could be doing some things that could probably help more as far as drill work and, and, and things like that. And, um, but, but he, he's done some, but he has he's done some really good things for this offense and he will continue to. And you're still talking about a guy that's ripping off, I don't know, six, six and a half, seven yards of carry. I mean, that's, 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 that's pretty damn good. You know, um, I think where he's really improved is his blocking. Um, you know, so so he's still doing some very good things in our offense, and we're going to expect him to continue to enhance those and get better. Right next door, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Tony, just wanted to, to ask your thoughts. I haven't, haven't had Steel Chambers in your room for a few years and watching what he's done at linebacker now. Just what do you make of his success in those guys? Yeah, well, so when we recruited Steel, one of the things a lot of people didn't want him as a linebacker. As a matter of fact, our defensive coaches wanted him as a linebacker, but he wanted to play running back. And so we took him as such, and, and we didn't have the conversations early in his career that if this doesn't, if you're not getting a ton of reps on offense, we will possibly approach you about playing defense. You can always reserve the right to say no. But he said yes to it. Um, he just wanted to play. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that he's doing well over there. Um, I kind of, I think it was about maybe 20 seconds after his interception, I was like, well, this is why you're, that linebacker, <laughs> you know? but but no, he's done well, and I'm very proud of him. I'm happy for him. He's helped this football team. He's helping himself. Um, I think it's been a good situation for everybody involved. Right next door, Tim May, Letterman Row. Tony, I don't know if you remember this far back, but you used to play running back. That was uh, I don't remember. That was yeah. so far long ago. When you look at a guy at this level, you know, I, th I think only running backs maybe can even relate to this, but the violence that. From play to play, I mean, right. 90, 19 times out of 20, you're going to get knocked down pretty hard and stuff. Uh, and Maya seems to have the ability to kind of throw punches back a little bit. You know, what, what are you looking for when you're looking for a running back? And in that regard, I mean, can he be tough enough? I guess is the question. But number two, what just stands out about Maya in that area? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think Maya, he's about three feet tall. So, <laughs> but um, you just, you know, Maya doesn't give him much surface area to hit. You know, it's all shoulders and, and, and thighs, and, and he's so he's so strong. You know, the lower half of his body is like hitting tree trunks, and and um, he does a really good job of speeding up into contact. And you know, um, conventional wisdom would say if you're like the analogy of driving a car, um, when you're going into contact or hit a car, if you're if you were to have a car accident, you hit the brakes and slow down. Well, this is a little different. You have to speed up into contact, and he has a he has an uncanny way of, of speeding up into contact, um, driving his legs into contact and through contact. Um, he's got really, really good contact balance, so he's able to take shots and bounce off them and still keep keep his balance. Um, and, and he's a load. He's 200 and, what, 225, 227 pounds. Um, so yeah, but he has an uncanny ability to be able to speed up into contact, and then re, you know his, he reduces the surface area in his in his pad level, so there's not a lot to hit. Yeah, but it's also a willingness to do it. I mean, Absolutely, you know, you got to be a willing combatant. Yeah, no, yeah. no doubt, you can't be soft. Yeah, can you look in his eyes and see when he's really? I mean, in a game, what? what, what I think I just talk, well, you just got to talk to him. I mean, it's not about just in game. I mean, yeah. just sit down. If you sit down and have a conversation with him, um, he's a he's a tough guy. And, and he's a very motivated guy, and um, there's nothing soft about that kid. I mean, now again, he's very nice and he's humble and, and all those things, but he is a he is he is a tough guy. Got time for two more questions. Front row right, Austin Ward, rivals 97.1 The Fan. Tony, just to clarify, what you say every training camp is that you don't have a crystal ball, not that you don't care. <laughs> I 
Yeah, so that. <laughs> I want to um, clarify that. Yeah. Um, do you tell me how off base this may or may not be? Do you see anything, or did you see anything with Trey before the foot that reminded you of 2018 with J.K. and wanting to take the next step as a sophomore, and he struck, he wanted to hit home runs and sharing time with Mike and all that? But no, I don't. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, I think this is everything is individualized, and um, you know. I'm, 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 I got to be honest with us. I'm, I'm not going to allow people to paint a picture of this kid's not playing well. And, and, and no, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that you did, but but no, I didn't. I didn't see that, and I haven't seen that. Um, so you know, I, I just think circumstances. We are where we are, and, and there's some things that we can do better, and he can do better, and um, I can do better. Um, there's some things that mine can do better, and Dallin and my whole room. So um, we're not a finished product. We're in week five. And um, we're going to keep swinging, and um, and again, we're just trying to win as many games as we can, however it looks.